Remember the time that Mike Tyson fought with a broken back? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Remember that time that Mike Tyson fought with a broken back? What was Mike talking about anyway? Is it even possible to fight with a broken back? Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Today, I'm talking about comments that Mike Tyson made after a fight against Clifford Etienne many years ago. Because this is the channel where I explain orthopedic injuries and sports medicine in a way that's easy to understand for everybody. Tyson's comments were unusual at the time and they became the subject of a very popular meme on the internet. I broke my back. What do you mean by that? Your back, back is broken. And as we prepare for tonight's exhibition fight between Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr., we can reminisce about some of Tyson's more memorable moments. What exactly was Iron Mike talking about after his defeat of Clifford Etienne? And had he really been fighting with the injury that he claimed to have? That's what we're going to find out in this video, so let's dive right into it. Mike Gerard Tyson, otherwise known as Iron Mike, Kid Dynamite, and the baddest man on the planet, is considered one of the best heavyweight boxers of all time. He has had a professional career that spanned 20 years between 1985 and 2005. He was the undisputed world heavyweight champion from 1987 to 1990, and he was the youngest boxer to have claimed the heavyweight title. Tyson won his first 19 professional fights by knockout, with 12 of them coming in the first round. The first round. He was the first heavyweight boxer to hold simultaneous WBA, WBC, and IBF titles, and the only heavyweight fighter to unify those titles in succession. After defeating Michael Spinks, he also became the lineal champ. He successfully defended his title nine times before losing the title to Buster Douglas in 1990. In working back to the title, he then defeated Donovan Ruddock twice in 1991. However, he was unable to fight Evander Holyfield, who then held the titles after defeating Buster Douglas in 1990. Here, Tyson was forced to put his boxing career on pause for a period of time. In 1992, Tyson was sentenced to six years in prison. He was released on parole after three years in 1995. After a series of comeback fights, he regained the WBC and WBA titles in 1996, only to lose them again to Evander Holyfield in 1996. He lost to Evander a second time in 1997 in one of his more controversial fights that had him disqualified in the third round after repeatedly biting Evander's ears. Yes, I did say biting. Unsurprisingly, after this incident, his boxing license was rescinded. Go figure. Fortunately for Mike, it was only temporarily. He returned to fighting in 1999. He defeated a number of opponents between 1999 and 2002, at which time he faced Lennox Lewis for the Unified Heavyweight Championship in Memphis, Tennessee. He lost to Lewis by knockout in the eighth round. Shout out to the Moat Posse and to the Camera Heights Golden Gales. Those who know, know. Tyson fought again in Tennessee on February 2003, this time with Clifford Etienne. He defeated Etienne after only 49 seconds in the first round. However, this fight was also mired with controversy. Rumors had been circulating about Tyson's pre-fight lack of fitness. He had reportedly been partying in Las Vegas, and it was the first fight in which he sported his new facial tattoo. After his victory, he was interviewed post-fight by Jim Gray, who questioned him about his pre-fight fitness. Mike, were you really sick this week? Uh, what was the problem? I broke my back. What? I broke my back. Bro, what are you talking about, man? What do you mean by that? Your broke back, back is broken. When asked what portion of his back he had broken, Mike replied. A, a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. But wait, is this dude serious? Was he trying to say that he had just fought and knocked out Another human being while he had had a broken back? Gray asked Mike whether he had suffered the injury while sparring. Did that in sparring? Mike went on to explain that it stemmed from a motorcycle accident injury that was exacerbated by a core workout with weights. No, I did it um, by a motorcycle accident. The doctor discovered it. He later added, I don't even know how I'm standing. It's a miracle. The question is, did Iron Mike really break his back? And is it even possible to engage in this type of activity with a broken back? Tyson had previously been injured in an October 1997 motorcycle accident. While riding with his friends during evening rush hour, Mike lost control of his motorcycle on an interstate exit ramp after it hit some sand. Initially, 
Tyson appeared to be all right, and he was driven home by the state police at Tyson's request. After a few hours at home, he felt unwell and decided to go to the hospital. Examination in the hospital revealed several injuries consistent with a motorcycle crash, including a suspected pneumothorax. For more on that type of injury, check out my video on Drew Brees' recent rib injury. Tyson was treated in the hospital with a chest tube over a few days until his symptoms resolved. He recovered without incident, or at least so he thought. One of the injuries that he suffered, although minor at the time, was an injury to his spinal column. This was likely either a small anterior compression wedge fracture or a transverse process fracture. Although both are fractures of the spine, both of these injuries will heal on their own without surgical intervention. As this accident occurred during the time where Tyson's license was rescinded, he was able to give the injuries adequate time to heal without the demands of training. That was 1997. Fast forward to 2003 while training for his fight with Etienne. While completing his daily core workout, 2,500 crunches with a 20 pound weight, Tyson became incapacitated with back pain. He sought medical attention from a physician. The physician apparently told Tyson that his back was broken from his earlier motorcycle accident. Really? Tyson later explained in an interview with Gray at his 2018 International Boxing Hall of Fame induction ceremony that he misunderstood what the physician had told him. I just said uh, what the doctor told me, the doctor said your back is breaking, you have pieces breaking off your spine, and then so that's the only thing I knew, my back was broken. Okay. That's what the doctor told me. His misunderstanding had led him to believe that he was still suffering from a broken back, six years after his original injury. But if he hadn't really broken his back, what had he actually done? When Tyson had injured his back during his motorcycle crash, he had likely suffered an anterior wedge fracture of the thoracolumbar spine or a transverse process fracture. With appropriate rest, immobilization, and rehabilitation, both of these injuries would be expected to heal without significant problems. Once healed, Tyson would be able to return to normal activities without restriction. However, either injury might increase the likelihood of future degenerative changes of the spine. In other words, the previous injuries, although minor, might contribute to future arthritic changes of the spine. Some activities, such as many thousands of crunches over the course of the ensuing years might contribute to the slow arthritic deterioration of his spine, ultimately causing arthritis of the spine and degenerative disc disease. You see, crunches involve the repetitive forward flexion or bending of the thoracic and lumbar spine. On every crunch repetition, you take a portion of the spine that would normally be lordotic or curved with the apex towards the front, and you make it kyphotic, curved with the apex towards the back. This concentrates compressive forces on the front of the thoracolumbar spine and expulsive forces at the rear of the thoracolumbar spine. This means that the front of the vertebrae and the vertebral disc get crushed downward while their contents get squeezed out the back. Previous injuries such as an anterior wedge fracture would amplify this process. If there were any bony overgrowth from previous fractures, callus, or from degenerative arthritis, osteophytes, it is possible that small portions of these overgrowths might be cracked, splintered, or even broken off by repetitive spinal flexion. Would the back be broken? No, not really. Although I suppose you could call these fractures. You would be reaching but you could say that. Are they spinal in nature? Well, if they involve the vertebrae of the spinal column, then they would indeed be spinal. Did Mike Tyson really fight with a broken back? I don't think so, but at least he was only half out to lunch when he responded to Jim Gray's line of questioning. By the time this video is out, the exhibition fight will have taken place and we will know the outcome of the Tyson versus Jones Jr. fight. Whether or not you believe that Tyson once fought with a broken back, his transformation and preparation for tonight's fight has been nothing short of amazing and speaks to his position as one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. No shade to Roy Jones. If you have another athlete who has suffered an injury that you want me to cover, share this video on social media and DM me on my socials. I will pick my next topic from those DMs and tag you when it drops. If you recently subscribed to my channel, then thank you for becoming a part of the Intern Army. If you appreciate this video, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my content. And be sure to tag a student who is interested in medical topics. And of course, don't forget to follow me on my socials. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday, or it's